Hey everybody, it's uh, Larry Gonzalez with your market update for this first day of November. Thank God we're done with October. The only cool thing about October was spending time with my family and trick-or-treating yesterday in Annapolis, Maryland, which is pretty freaking awesome. November, November's gonna be pretty crazy too, ain't gonna lie, at least for the first couple weeks as we kind of get through uh, the election. And then we also have the Fed meeting on the 7th. We'll also have the first look at inflation in that second week of November. So, so a lot going on. Really this week, which is a super, super volatile week. Uh, and you'll see uh, it wasn't very good for rates. So prices, prices steady, all right? There was a big report that came out. Uh, pretty steady, but up a little bit. Inventory inventory is going up as it normally does uh, in a higher rate market. And then interest rates, interest rates went up. We'll get into that. We'll look at a, a graph for VA rates. All right. So the headline news for the week is home price appreciation still up, but slowing down. Jobs reports. We had jobs reports Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All of them were kind of mixed bag. And then inflation, inflation, we're getting closer to the feds. Their line in the sand, if you will. Not quite there yet. And then initial jobless claims backtracked this week. Not very good. That's really kind of, those are the four things that kind of move the markets this week. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, let's start with the Case Shiller Home Price Index. Case Shiller Home Price Index is, a, is the golden standard for home price appreciation across the country. And it showed a home price appreciation gain 15th month in a row, record high home price appreciation across the nation. That said, the rate of increase continues to decline. So it was at 0.3% this past month. If you take out the not do a non-seasonal adjustment, take that out, guess what? We were at a minus 1%. So uh, still over across the country. That's my that's my grandson having some fun over there. All right, so let's look at the ADP. The, the first jobs report came out on Tuesday, and that was the JOLTS, Job Opening Labor Turnover Survey. And actually, that dropped from over 8 million down to 7.86 million. Kind of a, a sneak peek of what we could expect the rest of the week with the jobs reports. But you know, ADP said, not, not in my house. ADP showed very strong growth in the private sector. There were 233,000 new jobs, which was double the expectations. Wage growth, though, wage growth slowed. You can look at this. Uh, for people who stayed in the same job, 4.7 down to 4.6. Previous or people who are, were changing jobs went from 6.7, a big drop down to 6.2% increase in their wage. So good thing for inflation moving forward that the job growth is, is, is slowing down, that wage inflation is slowing down. We did get another report also uh, that showed that third quarter GDP, gross domestic product, was at 2.8%. Uh, versus what was expected, the 3%. Now that's the middle report. We'll get another report next month that will kind of close us out uh, for the third quarter. Actually, no, this is the first one for the third quarter. We got two more that will really kind of get us to that, that right number at the end in December. So, so really ADP, super strong. Interest rates shot up a lot on that news. Uh, and it really could have been worse, but that GDP report uh, basically kind of showed the hey, economy slowing down. On Friday, and we're kind of out of sequence here, but I'm sticking to the jobs reports because that's what I talked about a second anyway. So jobs reports, the BLS jobs report, only 12,000 jobs were added in October. And that was well below the expectations of 100,000. So why is the number so different from the ADP number which showed a huge gain? Well, I would say the hurricane and the Boeing strike are to blame for the numbers because BLS, if you don't get paid, you don't get counted. All right, ADP, you're gonna get counted whether you're getting paid or not. It's when you come off the payroll. So that's one of the big reasons for the disconnect. We may see those numbers change next month. Unemployment rate remains steady at 4.1%. So it was 4.1% last month, 4.1% this month. So that's, hey, that, that's good. Uh, what that probably is gonna mean is that um, there, you're gonna see a Fed rate cut uh, in November, all right? They're meeting on the 7th. Unemployment steady, job growth slowed down, inflation is steady. Guess what? We're gonna lower the Fed funds rate. Now, will it be a 50 point drop? Probably not, maybe a 25 drop, but to me, I think it'll either be zero or 25 basis points. We'll see, we'll find out next week. Next up, personal consumption expenditure. That came out on Thursday of this week showed that the core, which is what, Fed want, what the Fed wants to see at 2%, was actually at 2.7%, stayed steady. The overall he headline dropped 
from 2. Point, I think 6% down to or 2.5% down to 2.1%. That's great. I mean, the Fed's measure is 2%. They really want to see the core down. Now, the core strips out food and energy prices because those are more volatile. They want to see the the steadiness across steady uh, steady economic factors. So, but if you look at the annualized core run rates, so basically the last three months, the last six months, those rates are much closer to the Fed average, not the 2.7, but closer to the 2.32 over three months, the last three months, and then 2.28 over the last six months. So we're really, when you strip out, you know, the whole rest of the year, we are really close to where the Fed wants us to be. So, so that is really good positive news. And that also goes into the reason why it's likely that the Fed is going to drop the Fed funds rate uh, when they meet next week. Uh, the other things that you can see, other parts of the report, the income, income rose 0.4%. Consumer spending, though, rose 0.5%. So people are spending more money than what they're making. Oh, no, oh yeah. The rate of savings dropped from 4.8% to 4.6%. So this kind of goes back to really what's underneath everything and the fact that we are spending so much money and we're kind of like the government, putting it all on credit, all right? Uh, spending money we don't have. Uh, and that is something that we have to look out uh, for maybe in addition to the inflation and the unemployment, which the, that's what the Fed's concerned with, but really, from an economic standpoint, we gotta look at that consumer spending because it is still still out of control. Initial jobless claims, um, we had a big drop, twelve thousand drop in initial jobless claims down to two hundred sixteen thousand, you know, a twelve thousand drop, and then continued claims down twenty six thousand. It was it was down twenty eight thousand last week, down twenty six thousand this week. We're down to one point eight six two continuing claims. So that's not really good news to support the Fed dropping the Fed funds rate, but. That is what we're seeing. All right, VA rates. Let's talk about VA rates. They were up this week. All right, and last week we talked about what was kind of causing rates to go up. Strong GDP, job growth strong from September, uh, and strong retail sales. Well, this week rates went up because job growth was, was pretty strong in a couple different reports. Inflation was kind of good, but not great. Actually, the GDP helped because it was actually measured at 2.8%. Uh, but really expect to see VA rates stay pretty high. And you can see above six and a half percent now. All right, we're above six and a half percent. This is across the nation for VA rates, not just not necessarily my rates, but across the nation, the average. So you see rates are a little higher. Uh, where will they go next week? Well, that's hard to say. All right, the election, you know, again, and I've said this before, I think rates are going to go up no matter who's elected. I, I just think, you know, inflationary spending, you know, all the promises that are being made, you're going to see more spending, more borrowing from the federal government, more money being printed. We need to stop that. It, but it's that's just kind of the way way those things happen after elections, unfortunately. Uh, you also got the Fed meeting next week. And remember, when the Fed dropped the Fed funds rate in September, interest rates shot up. But this is a different story. Rates have been going up leading into this Fed meeting Maybe they come down with a 25 basis point drop. We'll see. I don't have the crystal ball. Those are just a couple options that I see ahead. All right, let's look at the 10 year treasury. Again, 10 year treasury and 30 year fixed rate mortgage. They they dance a slow dance together. Again, they're a little they're not super close, like they really like each other. They're they're kind of way way apart right now. They're about two, two and a half percent difference between the 10 year treasury and VA, almost three percent or two point seven five for conventional. But you can see, and I got the the this week, the beginning of this week, October 28th, and then November 1st bracketed. You can see pretty much every day interest uh, the 10 year treasury went up, and in conjunction, interest rates went up as well. And we need to see some good news next week that will help us again. Going back to what I said before, you get that 10 year treasury down. We're above the 100 day moving average, or above the 200 day moving. We are a lot farther from the 200 day moving average than we really need to be. We need to see those numbers drop. And that will certainly help us out for uh, for our mortgage rates. Uh, what does this all mean? Well, you know, despite despite the higher interest rates, applications were up five percent last week. Purchase applications and it's still up ten percent year over year. So again, you, you know, when there's blood in the streets, that's when you buy. And I think some people are seeing that they need to move. You're going to pay a lot for rent. So would you rather pay somebody else's mortgage or your own? Uh, refinance activity though it fell six uh, percent last week, a fifth week in a row. And, and really, but still 84% more refinances at this point than there were last year at this time. Probably not going to refinance in the next month, uh, but you probably want to be ready. 
Now you probably you want to be ready. And if you want to take advantage of the lack of buyers in the market, and you want to go ahead and get that home with a credit, a seller credit, to maybe do a buy down and make that payment affordable, now is probably the time to do that. Uh, and, and for sellers, again, don't be greedy. You know, if you're if you're having a hard time selling your home, before you drop the sales price, you might want to think about just giving them a credit, maybe ten thousand, depending on the on the uh, you know the the size or the 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 amount of the purchase price, give it $10,000 or a $15,000 credit. That will make the house more affordable for your for your prospective buyers. And it'll get your house off the market and then you can go off and do the next thing. So really, that's all I got for you this week. I hope you have a great November, lots going on. It's my birthday month, which means it's very special to me. And, uh, and actually one of my daughters has her birthday in this month as well. And it's Thanksgiving, it's a great day, football, turkey, you know, mashed potatoes, and everything else. So great month ahead. Let's uh, stay positive and uh, have a great weekend. Aloha.